So Bob could control each of us, give us each individual directions, ask us individual questions. What are you seeing now? What are you doing? You know, what's what's going on and that kind of stuff. But Dennis and I couldn't hear any of that. We were we were uh, in isolation booths. So anyway, we go out. We go out of body. We do our usual thing. And by then it was it was it was pretty easy and pretty habitual. And then we meet up. And when we meet up, we kind of met and said, Hey, let's go do something. So we went out and met some some non-physical entities. We had conversations. We went places, did things. And all the time, Bob is asking us, you know, well, what do we see? You know, what are we saying? What information do we get? And he's collecting all this now. Well, now, now, you mean in, in the astral state, the yeah. astral state, Bob Monroe was able to communicate with you? No, Bob was talking over a, a mic that, that had uh, his, his voice was coming into us from over a headset. But, but, I mean, you heard it in the astral state. Okay. Oh, yes. Yes, but I hear it. You know, that was one of the things that early on we had to practice that. You had to be able to integrate the two. And I think, as it turned out, that was very important. Uh, it's not just that you have an astral state that's very separate from the physical state and that what's going on in one is, you know, is not, uh, you're not aware of the other. It can be that way. And if you don't train yourself to be different than that, then that's usually the way it is. But after a while, you can train yourself not only to hear and listen while you're in that state so that you pick up the information, even though you're totally unaware of your body. You don't really at that point even realize you have a body. Your body awareness is, is gone, but you hear the voice. You hear the information. It's just a voice in your head. That's and amazing. You also, what we learned is to be able to talk so that we could you know, have our, our physical you know, vocal cords talking and communicating with Bob. All right. So while you were you were in the astral state and Bob was talking and communicating to you, you were then able to basically answer those questions. Right. We could answer all those questions and talk back. And Bob had us being recorded. He would record everything we'd say, and as we tell him things, he'd give us direction. Now, from our experience, like I say, it, this was just voices in our head. His voice was a voice in our head, and uh, our speaking was just kind of an intent to speak. But eventually, you know, you learn to do this, and the body follows both directions. So the body was kind of an unconscious transmitter and receiver, if you will. It would receive things from Bob, and we could transmit through it while we were in the out-of-body out of state. That took us probably six months to, to work our way up on that, because the normal out-of-body state and even meditation state you're not talking to somebody. You know, that's kind of a, an odd thing to be, and you think that would bring you back from that state. But eventually you just learn to integrate the two. And, you know, since then I've, I've realized that there's multiple realities. We're multiple-dimensional beings, and you don't have to visit these realities one at a time. You can parallel process. You can be in, you know, more than one simultaneously. You're just processing on several different levels at the same time. And you it's just thing you learn with practice. It, uh, it doesn't happen if you don't practice it, but it can happen. So that was the thing. Here we are lying in these booths. Bob's talking to us. We're out of body, and uh, we're talking back to him, telling him what we experience. And he has us both on tape. But we went go through this thing for probably an hour and an hour and a half, and we had quite a few adventures and things. And we both, you know, it's over. Bob brings us back. We stagger into the into the uh, control room because by then your you know your body has been in this this uh, delta state for a long time and and uh, you're a little groggy. Yeah, you're a little groggy and the and the lights are real bright. You know you have to get used to that. And we kind of stagger up there and Bob looked at us and and uh, he was good at kind of deadpan and he says, "Well, do you two think you were together?" You know, and we said, "Well, yeah, it seemed that way." You know, because we stuck together, we we traveled as a as a pair and did all these things together, interacted, talked with each other, talked with others, and and he said, "Well, listen to this," and he started to play the two tapes, and as he played those tapes, it was that's the thing I think that that hit me right between the eyes and finally broke that barrier. And I bet over the next three weeks, I must have said two hundred times, "My God, this is real." <laughs> My God, this is real, you know, and I just, that was a, when you get to that point where it's your experience and not something you're reading about, but you're actually experiencing it, it's a, it's bigger than just an aha moment. It's suddenly you've got this, you know, other reality, this, this thing that's happened and it's right in your face. You did it. You know it. You were aware. You were conscious. 
It wasn't like you woke up and, you know, and it was a dream. And it was real. Now, at that point, if you're a scientist like I was, you can't say, oh, well, just a trick. No, that couldn't be a trick. Dennis and I spent an hour and a half traveling around together, experiencing the same things, having the same conversation, and it was all there on tape. If it wasn't you, Tom, that did it, but someone else, and he came back and said, oh, Tom, you won't believe this experience I had, mm. would you have thought it might have still been a trick at well, that point? Well, what I, you know, my, my approach to, to basically everything is what I call just open-minded skepticism, but I would have been skeptical. I would have said, yeah. Okay, I know you think you did. I know mm -hmm. that you're being honest. You're not trying to trick me. Right. I know that you had this experience and all, but what what was the protocol? You know, how, how soundproof were these rooms? Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You have all these questions that come into mind that kind of make it so that well, maybe there wasn't anything paranormal, yeah. paranormal going on. Maybe it was was something else. Or maybe Monroe yeah. hypnotized everybody. You know, you could have thought that, right? Yeah, except the, the the format wasn't like that. He didn't say he didn't lead. You know, he wasn't leading the the question. It wasn't like uh, okay. Well, now now do you see this such and such? You know, and if we were hypnotized, we might have taken the suggestion and run with it. But it wasn't like that at all. You know, that's what I mean. If you're there and you experience it, you know what it's like. Then you can't escape. You know, your experience. It's your experience, and you have to kind of face up that yeah, that was my experience in it. And, uh, you know, how could you explain that? Well, the the most obvious explanation is that we were, you know, non-physically connected in this out-of-body state, and we were experiencing the same thing. Now, how can you do that if it's just in your imagination? If it's just something going on in your head, how can you, you know, do that sort of thing? Um, another explanation was that we were just uh, telepathically connected and that one of us was maybe imagining it and the other one was picking it up. But, you know, that's almost as strange and far out as the first one. So we continued to do these kind of experiments. Um, uh, Nancy Lee, uh, uh, who was uh, Bob's stepdaughter, was there. She and I did a very similar thing not, not too many weeks after that. And we did this stuff many, many times, as well as other things. Bob was very much into evidence. He realized that we wouldn't understand it and we wouldn't take it seriously unless we had evidence. So we would meet people and then call them up and, you know, we'd like remote viewing. You'd, you'd go out of body and you'd visit somebody and then you'd get back and you'd call them up and say, well, what were you doing, you know, half an hour, an hour ago? Uh, where were you? And see if the data connected. He'd put stuff on a blackboard where he'd write numbers and things down on a blackboard and we were supposed to go into the room and tell him what was written there. Um, oh, just on and on. We would practice healing. We would practice uh, going into the future and saying what was going to happen next week. And we'd check the data and we just did this sort of thing constantly for about, you know, eight years. So, you know, that was a long time. Tom, how do you know you weren't uh, remote viewing? There's a difference in remote viewing. In remote viewing, you're basically, it's sort of like watching a movie. Your, your consciousness is there. You're looking around. You're seeing things, but you're not really interacting with it. When you're out of body, you're also in an interactive state. You can... You can interact with the stuff that's there. That's a, that's a little difference between them. But, you know, all these things are very strongly related. It's not like, well, out of body is one thing and remote viewing is something totally else. It's totally different. It's all about consciousness. Consciousness is the, is the center, and it's what a consciousness can do, what, how a consciousness works, and, uh, you know, what are the, you know, the things we, we do, the out of body, the, the remote viewing, all of these are just properties of consciousness. Well, that's Any right. Tom, stay with us. Stay with us. We're going to take this quick break. We'll be right back with you. Tom's websites are linked up right now at coasttocoastam.com. His book, with the My Big Toe Trilogy, and, of course, Theory of Everything is what it's all about. Lots to talk about with Tom Campbell on Coast to Coast AM. Tom, let me uh, chat with you a little bit more about Monroe, and then we'll get into, of course, the, your work, your incredible work here. The, uh, the basis for the astral projection was there a point, even though you said it was real, was there a point that you separated the physical from the non-physical, or did you believe that they were both related? If I get the, the, your question right, the physical and the non-physical are, you know, they are separate, but, but they are also related. Uh, they are two separate reality systems, two separate reality frames 